Okay, hi everyone. I think we, we are back. So, um, uh, Oan, could you, uh, would you introduce the, the next uh, session? Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Welcome back to AJ Asia's Digital N3 Salon. This is the first of many in our series that we're kicking off this year. Uh, you're right in time now for our next session on how to build your presence online, skills we all obviously need right now. Our next guest is someone who really doesn't need an introduction. Um, Angie Lau is Editor-in-Chief, CEO and Founder of Startup Forecast News. Uh, she's also a sought-after keynote speaker who's been invited to tech summits uh, from Paris to Spain to Singapore, you name it. Uh, she talks about leadership, blockchain technology, and women leaders in tech. She's also designed her own line of clothing and was also just happened to be featured in Vogue magazine. Um, Angie is, is an award-winning veteran journalist and uh, a great personal friend of mine. Uh, and in short, she's inspired so many of us to really pursue our dreams. Angie, thanks so much for joining us from San Francisco. Thank you so much, Juan. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. And I, I'm having imposter syndrome right now after that introduction. Um, but also, um, you know, I think I was in a place, I, I, I'm not sure if I should be the person who's doing this presentation, but in fact, I think I am in that my journey to building an online presence has, um, has been a, a hard road, but a fun one. I've learned so much, uh, and certainly others have done it better than I can and do. Um, but I've learned a lot and, and, you know, I'm in a unique position to show you what I've done for myself for forecast. And so, um, sharing a few tips that I've learned along the way for everybody else. Fantastic. Well, I'll let you kick, kick it off. We will help you with the uh, PDF presentation and flip back between that and, and you. Okay, here we go. So everyone is working from home. Welcome. Um, I'm here in San Francisco. Um, I'm usually based in Hong Kong and the team is very distributed anyway. So this is business as usual, as I've said in uh, the last panel. Um, but really, this is a, a unique time. Um, but one thing that I think um, that we are all aware of is that the alternative is not an option. So we got to move forward. We got to lean in. Um, and I'll tell you that in the few weeks since COVID started, since really in January for most of us in Asia and now, everyone is isolation and shelter in place since uh, late February, early March, um, is that for us at Forecast, we've launched our 2.0, we've la launched new um, newsletter, we've launched new products, we're continuing to press on with projects, we're continuing to consistently think about how to be better with our product. I'm sharing that with you because it's about mindset. And so I hope that, um, you know, by sharing what you can do to really build, look, we've got all the time in the world, and yet we don't, right? It's what we choose to do with that time. And your mindset will make all the difference in the world. So how do you build your online presence? Let's get right to it. And I really think it is about something that I've said since day one. Um, a lot of you, uh, I've had the pleasure of, of knowing um, a lot of you for, for a while um, and being at AAJA conferences. And one of my biggest things is to really try to empower everyone to find their voice. And um, let's talk about that. Three sentences, you know, as you be, before you even think about, oh my gosh, you know, what should I do? Online presence, it's so intimidating. Do I have to be on LinkedIn? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh my God, it's so overwhelming. Do I want to sh even share a little bit about myself? You know, um, how many of you have sat there and, and, you know, you're incredible writers and yet, you know, you're telling everybody else's story and you don't tell your own. Well, social media is you're telling your own story, right? This is your online presence. There's a disconnect for us uh, as journalists sometimes. Um, so I want to give you a piece of advice and one, one piece of thing to tell you simply is just get over it. It's done. Your story is, is uh, equally important. And in fact, you know, this, this concept of, you know, letting others being the story, um, you're, you're not dishonoring that process. In fact, you're elevating that by being strong in your voice. So three sentences to help you think about how to start thinking about who you are, right? Because it, it's about um, trying to figure out, um, is everybody seeing this one, this slide here, three sentences? 
it's popping back and forth one for me. No, it is up now. Uh, yeah. They, okay. Yeah. So, oh, I'm just going, yeah, this one. Um, three sentences what is your elevator pitch and you know you're familiar with that concept 30 seconds you have 30 seconds who are you what can you tell us it's the beginning of your story and so who are you just ask yourself some three just do this exercise uh at home <laughs> because that's where we all are um who are you what makes you unique and different okay what makes you unique and different and just just put some bullet points down. And what is your mission statement and philosophy and core value? All right, let's go through it. Let's. So who are you, right? So breaking it down, your job title is obvious, but I would say that this is also your story. And the one thing that I realized as I was, you know, kind of evolving, growing up in my own career, um, and when I was at Bloomberg, I really thought that my title was who I was. And when I transitioned away from that to kind of step into the abyss of my next journey, you know, there, 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 was, there was a struggle, I would have to say, as to, well, who am I? At that point, you just kind of realize you are more than your job title, right? And so this is what I want you to lean into. So um, who are you, obviously, is what you do, you know, your, your job title, but, but also the personal story. Well, I'm a mother of a now three-year-old. Um, I, I love fashion. I speak about leadership. I love technology. I'm a startup founder at heart before I even became one. Um, you know, I love adventure. I love roller coasters. I love skydiving. You know, just kind of put those lists of things together from a, a, a personal point of view. You know, some of my uh, most you know, dearest friends, when I think of them, I don't think about their job title. Sorry, I'm just getting some feedback on a playback. Um, no, everything looks good, Angie, keep going. Um, so, so, um, yeah. um, as their job title or the company that they're working at, uh, I think of them, you know, um, one is an extraordinary, uh, you know, she's, she's so big in her heart, philanthropy, uh, another one, uh, you know, I just, just did this whole host. I mean, I could describe one, uh, for example, and, you know, probably her, her job title for me is down here. And there's about 10 more things above that, that really define her for me. And so if you're stuck, ask the most um, trusted people on your personal board, your friends, your colleagues, your, your boss, uh, you know, your, your, uh, your staff, um, you know, what is it that in their mind defines you? And sometimes, you know, they can come up with something very interesting that maybe you never gave yourself permission um, to describe yourself. Um, and so I guess, you know, when you ask yourself and you do this exercise is, you know, do the thought exercise of what defines you. Um, and, and how would you define yourself, right? Because remember, you are now the protagonist of your own story. You are the hero of your own story. And as we know in the classic Greek storyline, the hero also, you know, there's a lot of, uh, and you're also faced with a lot of um, obstacles. There are a lot of challenges in your way. And oftentimes there's an antagonist in your story. Uh, an antagonist can be embodied by a person in a, an event or uh, or a situation. But you are your protagonist. And so how can your audience learn about you and and beyond your title? What is it that makes you tick, right? Um, let's go to the next slide here. Your narrative, your voice, this is extraordinarily important. 
Uh, the second part is the second question that you want to ask yourself is what makes you unique? So give us some details, give us an example and, and, and be vulnerable. Um, give yourself permission to be vulnerable. You want to give the audience a little bit of a glimpse of what they want to see, where they want to go, that, that makes them go, she's, uh, She's got an interesting story. What she has to say, this is interesting, and and you know that that is the that's the part of the story that you that you want to start thinking about because you're about to uh, create a whole bunch of content about yourself and um, not necessarily yourself all the time, but your work, um, how you're speaking to an audience because this is a whole well-rounded conversation that you're going to be having essentially with strangers sure there are a lot of them are your friends who follow you but a lot of them are also your peers and a lot of them are your customers or your readers and sometimes even your boss you're you're having this kind of two-way con one-way conversation with the world and often that is extraordinarily intimidating but you know for those of you who work in broadcast um and and even in print, increasingly everyone's working in broadcast these days. My goodness, everybody's on Zoom, so we're all on camera now, right? But it is, you know, there, there's, uh, I'm speaking, but there's a two-way conversation that I'm having with you at the moment. And so it's not necessarily a one-way. It feels one-directional, obviously, but it shouldn't really feel that way um, if you share the details of your story, if there's a richness to that conversation, if there's a depth to it, if there's a vulnerability, that even if the person across from you isn't speaking, that there's a connection, you know, there's a real connection. That's that's really what you, what I'm challenging you to really start thinking about. I'm, I'm building an online presence can be very intimidating. So let's start from the very beginning, and that's you. And so. To round this out as to you know how you describe yourself to the world, the 30 second elevator pitch, you know, in 140 characters. What's your mission statement? Okay, so I've I've already known what you do, um, who you know, kind of the, the personal details, but I think this is the, the the part where I think you can really, you know, dare to just be yourself. Um, and I think increasingly with social media. Um, as as people learn to be on it more, and certainly uh, people are becoming much more comfortable sharing more, is really we've got to graduate to that level. So, you know, there may be a few of you who say, well, it's, you know, who cares who I am? It's this and that. But, but I'm reminded of something that... Um, Someone told me early in my career when I, you know, was thinking, you know, why does the hair have to be perfect and the face have to be perfect and the clothes have to be perfect? Is that it's not about me. It's about making some, it's making your audience feel comfortable with the content so that they're not distracted by, you're, you're, you're giving them a palette, you know? And, and if, if they're not engaged, you're not doing a service to anyone. So it's, it's kind of the, the ironic thing about putting your out, yourself out there. You're actually not doing it for you. You're actually doing it for your audience. You're, if you have something to say and you wanna be impactful, and you want that message to land, and you have stories that are incredible and you want it to reach an audience. In fact, you are the conduit you see. And so if, if people can connect with you personally on a social media level, they're going to connect with your work in a deeper way um, than you might have thought. So this is the beginning of your brand story. Um, any questions? Between the uh, the public persona and kind of the um, you know the the personal you know who who you are naturally, um, do you have to always be on when you're in social media? I mean, are you always very conscious of that? 
Um, Cause you know, I think a lot of us post stuff for work, we post stuff, you know, that's, you know, family oriented kind of silly stuff. How do you, how do you think about that? How do you navigate that? And how do you balance that? See, and this is where, you know, my personality on uh, certain platforms are very different. Um, I, you know, some, it, there are, in when it comes to Twitter, I am not very strong there. You know, I, I post and I let it go. I engage a little bit. It's kind of like my bulletin board of the work that we're doing. Um, that's how I've done it. And let me tell you, in fact, I could do it better. Um, and, you know, my team has been chasing me to do it better. And it's just one of those things. So please don't, you know, um, what I would love to do um, uh, is to, uh, you know, have, I've seen, I've seen great conversations online, on Twitter specifically, um, where people are interacting, you know, with stories. And I try to do that at times and you know but you have to stay on it and that's the other thing about social media is that you know um determine how much time you have and and how consistent you want to be um but certainly figure out what's comfortable for you and so if you're comfortable just you know um engaging and being controversial and making statements and putting yourself out there i would say amen go for it um for myself personally you know, I kind of have different, different, um, different aspects of the conversation on different platforms, and I can I can share with you what I mean. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Okay, let's let's start with LinkedIn. I I I feel most comfortable on LinkedIn um, because it's it's the network is uh, professional. It's um, very dynamic and at the same time, uh, people trust each other. I find that the the quality of the shares and the content and the, the comments are much more um, um, much more uh, meaningful and and of quality. Um, and that makes me comfortable to share uh, more. I've, I've done articles on LinkedIn, I've done, uh, reposts and shares and comments and things like that, but it is built for influencers and thought leadership. Um, so, you know, you can start figuring out, you know, once you figure out your voice, um, this audience on LinkedIn is where you can kind of start curating uh, the, the demographic of audience that is more professional, more network, more thought leadership. Um, so, you know, some tips here where uh, you can certainly do some um, some mission statements here. You know, a manifesto. Um, when I was transitioning from uh, Bloomberg to my next my next great adventure, I I I put it all out there. And, you know, in fact, LinkedIn was very much where I launched um, a, lot of, a lot of these initiatives and these uh, public statements. And, you know, the funny thing is it, more people saw, and I got to own my story versus, you know, a press release being released on PR Newswire somewhere that, you know, who knows who picks that up. Um, but LinkedIn was so meaningful um, and certainly, certainly social media was very meaningful that way um, when it came to owning uh, my own story. Um, another option, obviously, is Twitter, and it allows brands to engage as people. Um, so, you know, if you, so for us at Forecast, um, you know, you, you speak with one voice, but of, of course, if you are a person and you own your own Twitter handle and you want to engage that way, you are, you are also your own brand, right? And so to your point, Juan, think about what personality do you want to be on Twitter and how, um, how, how much you want to share. And I would say that, you know, if you've thought about it and you're comfortable about it, 
um, you should just go for it. So just some examples on uh, the slides that I've shown you. Um, you know, I'm playing around with little quotes. Um, I shared articles or coverage, but it really uh, should also match your voice. When I when I tweet and when I post things out, it is in my own voice. I, I write as I speak and I speak as I write. And so I think that should constantly and consistently uh, be what, what you should be doing. Because at the end of the day, it is about authenticity. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. In terms of, I wanted to get back to, um, to LinkedIn real quick, because you mentioned articles. I mean, many of us are probably not there yet in terms of writing articles. What, 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 what is the importance of articles and, and how do you approach those and what are you hoping to do with them? It's kind of like medium. So what I love about social media is that we're not really beholden to um, channels or you know media brands or you know newspapers or you know online you know um, paywalls uh, or somebody else's platform to speak anymore or even you can self-publish for heaven's sake. I think technology has really democratized access to everyone. It's also diluted and made it extraordinarily noisy. Okay, so that's why you want you do want to be thoughtful. This is so. This is what I mean. You you want to be actually really thoughtful about your story and your brand, right? What is it that you're trying to say and what is it that you're going to share that is of value to your audience and you have to be so specific about that because i think that um if you're not then um you, you then you become the noise you become part of the problem you're not part of the solution the solution is quality and so Juan, you said that articles i think is a great opportunity for people to understand your mission statement, your values, your manifesto, how you, you know. And so, so as, a, as a writer, you may have a perspective that is uniquely different. And if you pierced the veil a little bit and shared it, what kind of an article would that look like? You know, what kind of, if, if somebody asked you to write an op-ed, okay, about something that you really care about, that's essentially what I'm talking about is that, you know, would you dare put that on your LinkedIn? And, you know, if you're thinking cohesively about that story and it's, 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 it's your, it's on point, it's part of you, it's, it's on brand for you, then it's the consistency of who you are as a person that's being expressed on social media. That is really what you're trying to achieve here. Yeah. And so, I I was just going to say, so, so, so many of us, you know, when you are still in the news business as a reporter, as, a, as editors, I mean, we try to so much not be a part of the story. We try to keep our opinions out. So the idea of writing an op-ed piece is actually quite scary for me uh, in that way. But I mean, if, if you can, you know, put yourself in, in obviously the, you know, the, the boots of, 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 you know, the fabulous journalist that you are, how do you, how do you kind of delineate that? You know, how do you separate, you know, um, what kind of stuff you can write about without maybe putting too much of yourself out there that might give an impression of bias, for example. I think a lot of us would be concerned about that. And I think we've just been told uh, so much, right, in J school, I mean, obviously keep your, keep your own opinions out of it. It's really difficult to- But then. Juan, you've already done it. You've already done a number of manifestos, whether you realized it or not already. As AAJA president uh, for the Asia chapter, um, you did an extraordinary um, first person piece uh, about, um, uh, you know, from Vietnam to America and then going back to Vietnam. Yeah. Um, you know, th th this is comfortable for you already. Uh, it's, it's removing, it's removing that, that perception that our voices don't matter. Let's just be frank here. We're all biased. So let's just call it out for what it is. Right. We're going to try to do the best that we can. The, the, the objectivity is one of the unicorns that don't exist in our in our industry. 
The fact is we are an, all an amalgam of our own unique experiences. We are biased based on our own personal experiences. That also means that our perspectives are enormously valuable and unique in a diverse newsroom. It, it, that diversity of perspective is actually extraordinary. So in fact, you're doing your audience uh, a real service when it comes to media literacy, to understand your broader story so that they can understand the stories in which they read your voice from a bias or an objective point of view. Look, th th that's something that I completely understand. Um, I get it. But I think that it also prevents a lot of us from sharing and thinking of ourselves even as brands. I'm comfortable with that now. I'm 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 embracing that. But um, I'll tell you uh, th that this is only a year. Th this is only a, a habit that I have really worked hard at accepting for the past year or two. Um, really, even when I started forecast, uh, it I never realized that I did have a brand. I know that sounds really bizarre, but um, it's just a mindset. And so I think that it's it's not it's not that you're a brand, it's that you just want to be thoughtful of how how you do want to shape your voice, right? Um, and I think that I think that if you're going to build online presence, I want to know who you are. I mean, I don't want to, I, I don't want you to talk at me. I want to, I want you to talk to me. And so I, I want to follow you because you have something uniquely to say that I don't hear from anyone else. That's how you build your online presence. And so, you know, a lot of the things that I'm talking about is actually content driven and it's really, it's really from you. I, I could tell you about, okay, how do you do Twitter? And you, go, ah, you have to like, uh, be consistent, this and that, and LinkedIn and, and Facebook this, and, you know, we can go through all of it. And I, and I think, you know, if, if you're really diligent about it, all you have to do is really download, uh, you know, for the next 72 hours, best practices on how to do each of these social media things. Well, in terms of how do you, how do you just stay on top of it, content, you know, how do you feed, essentially, the content monster that is social media, right? Like the perfunctory stuff, it's all out there. What I'm trying to perhaps encourage and empower and have you think about it a little differently is that who do you want, what's a voice and what's a story and, and who are you and what do you want to share that's uniquely different? Um, and I want, and I, I think that, you know, if we lean into that, that's actually the most powerful thing that will truly pierce uh, the noise and establish your online presence. Right. Um, I know what's what's really cool about just following you is that you seem to um, you know uh, curate lots of different things. But you're right through these different mediums. It's like platforms. I do see you kind of injecting different different voices out there. How do you, uh, I guess, how do you think about it in terms of, you know, the daily, how you organize your day, how you approach social, social media on a daily, daily, you know, uh, as a daily routine? Can you kind of walk us through that and, and, you know, what your schedule is like? How do you then make sure that you find time to, to say something on each platform? Because I, that's something that I certainly struggle with. It's like I'm busy doing my job. And, and then I realize it might have been days before I actually put something out there. Girl, me too. Me too. <laughs> if you really, if you audit my social media, you'll be like, mm, she could do better. Uh, last, let's see, the last Instagram I did. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to call myself out, guys. Okay. The last Instagram I did was four days ago. Okay. Um, uh, so, you know, my bad, but then I probably did something yesterday on LinkedIn and then yeah. I did a couple of things on Facebook the right. day before so right. I'm like, and then I just tweeted a couple of things like an hour ago. Um, I, I would say that, you know, this is a, a communications tip, which is, you know, 
I'm just always mindful of who the audience is. As as an anchor, um, you know, you're just mindful of who is on the other end watching you at the moment. Um, at Forecast, as editor in chief, always mindful of who's our audience, what do they want from us, you know, uh, what are your demographics, and I would say. Uh, that's how I think about social media. LinkedIn, the demographics is very specific. It's professionals. It's um, usually mid-tier uh, to you know senior executives. At least in you know that that's just that's the general consensus. Um, and you know that's why the thought leadership stuff is there. And so you speak to that crowd. Medium. Um, is uh, you know that's not a platform that's the platform that a lot of people use for writing their own articles and really circumventing you know the brands out there but the articles that really uh, uh, kind of rise above the rest is um, it it really shares it really shares the uniqueness of your voice Facebook for example you have friends right that you talk to, you would talk to your friends in a different way than if it was a public post, right? So, so think about that. Like when you talk to your demographic, if this is a friend post, oh my gosh, yeah, you know, I, 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 sh I sh would share something really silly, very personal, but maybe I, I might share it um, to the public, maybe by accident or not. <laughs> um, but sometimes, you know, you kind of, is is this a glimpse that informs an audience that is not used to seeing you in a certain way that that helps them kind of appreciate your perspective a little bit more and then on facebook as well you also have uh facebook pages that you can have a much more professional tone on your voice um that you don't you know that that you can you can kind of uh compartmentalize your stories oh that should not be Flickr, that should be Instagram, sorry. Um, but let's talk about Instagram. Yes, Flickr, Instagram is uh, visual storytelling. Um, and I've, 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 on Forecast, when we first launched, we really gridded it out. We did that kind of, if you, if you see the grid, right, you can do, this is my personal Instagram, um, and so, you know, I just kind of post what I want to do, but other people, um, are much more stylized. They might have the same tones. They might have the same themes. There's a consistency to that story. And, you know, that's a different kind of voice. Um, so, so figure out what, what it is that, that you want to do. For me, I, there's a, there's really, uh, it's a glimpse of real life, what I'm doing, but I also share um, just some ideas, some thoughts, and some articles. Um, Insta, uh, Instagram stories, you know, um, IGTV, this is another way where you can increasingly communicate to the Instagram community. Um, this, I would say, is is also like a Twitter demographic where it's much more, it's much more general population. It's much more personal, you know, people, people have uh, 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 basically um, the full spectrum of what they share from super, super personal to, you know, just corporate, corporate, corporate. But I think the people and the brands and the companies who do it best is, is to have a very clear voice, right? That consistency of voice, um, you have a specific point of view. And so maybe on Earth Day, boom, you put something out there, right? That is a very specific opinionated um, part of your value statement and your mission statement and your personal values. And there's nothing wrong with that because um, that's very much your story. And then uh, for those of you with uh, a smartphone and a camera and you know, maybe the courage to just kind of figure out how you want to do some videos or, you know, as you go out and you do 
reporting and you're on the scene, there's nothing wrong with you kind of just doing a selfie selfie report or a, a selfie interview. I remember doing a, a lot of selfie interview with with uh, Ashley Alder at SFC behind the scenes at the Hong Kong FinTech Week. And uh, I think it surprised him as much as it surprised myself. And I posted out there as the selfie interview, but you know, you can just be really, really um, creative. Uh, but again, it's, it's, you know, who are you? Do you, do you, like, don't be afraid to have fun, but also the consistency I think is really important. And just do it. I mean, it's the best advice that I think that um, I can give you is just to do it. That's right. Just just to head out and do it. Um, with that, I'll I'll definitely keep that in mind. It's still a little scary though. Um, we have some uh, some a good a couple questions coming in. One from from Wendy uh, Tang, uh, our good friend there. She asks, you know, what are some challenges that you see people? Um, uh, faced with, you know, once you do put your brand out there, once you are online, um, you know, I imagine that one of the challenges must be, how do you keep that all up? Like you're on vacation. How do you, you know, how do you, how do you manage that? Um, what, what are the challenges you see of, of, of putting yourself out there, building your, that brand and how do you keep up with that? How do you improve that? Um, I don't, so, so I'm going to speak my truth and, you know, um, I, I think there's, this works for me. I'm comfortable with it at, at the same time. I know I could be better and it frustrates me, but I'm not going to do anything about it because of what it costs. Um, you know, I don't, I want to own my social media. I don't want social media to own me. I don't want to wake up every morning and, you know, go through a list of things that I must do and must share and must, you know, get out there. Um, you know, I, I want, I, I, this is still a conversation. I, I want to have a conversation when I want to have the conversation. And so the moment it starts feeling like work or it's not fun, it, it will start bleeding into, your content it will start feeling contrived it will start feeling like right i think that there's a nice medium so the medium that i found for myself is you know i oscillate between you know i'm just inspired and i will just post something right and or like yourself oh i haven't been on social media for a little bit so let me get let me get on it and and i should share this right you know, there was an article that came out. Oh, I should, I should share it. And it, it, it should be, it, I should do that. Um, two, also actually just kind of having a list of, um, you know, scheduled posts. You can easily do that too. You can, you can uh, spend, you know, an hour out of your work day um, and or an hour out of the week and just kind of like, schedule some posts um, and evergreens, as you know, right? You don't want to schedule posts that are irrelevant and not part of the, the conversation. On Twitter and Instagram, and th that's the thing about social media, you actually kind of, I would have to say, you kind of have to do it in real time if you are engaging in conversation um, because it is a conversation you're having with everybody. Um, and so, uh, th there, I think there's a nice balance there that, that you can do. Um, let me go back to my slides there because I, I wanted to show you that, you know, social media isn't just the, con the consistency. I think consistency is very important. But also, I'll share with you uh, some case study uh, of, of forecast. You know, podcasts, videos, website. Um, Consistency, you can regularly time out social media posts for, for Wendy, that's a good way to do it. You wanna craft and customize to your audience and you wanna engage, that's, it's, that means again, understanding the demographic of the audience on the social platform that you're engaging them with. And so Facebook is general population, LinkedIn is much more network, professional, Instagram, visual storytelling, um, you know, personal, Twitter, 
you know, a lot of media is out there. It's, it's just a lot of current events, current affairs. Um, so you want to, you know, how are you going to contribute uh, anything interesting in terms of, in terms of uh, new facts or, or perspectives that you can share? Um, and again, it is about having a conversation. And this is how you can grow your, your personality or your brand or your online presence on social media is to develop conversations with different thought leaders. Reach out. Reach out and, and, and you know, hey, love that piece. What do you think of this? And or what do you mean you think this, this, right? And have you ever thought about this? And, and you know, it helps. And if they retweet your tweet, wow, you know, their audience suddenly sees you, right? You can amplify your voice uh, by reaching out and joining others. And then uh, also have your own network where you share and retweet. I know that every time AJ Asia or AAJA posts anything, anytime Juan posts anything that I see, uh, Ching Ching, uh, you know, uh, Rami, Nick, uh, everybody, right? Uh, Mike, uh, Gilles, I'll just like love retweet, love retweet. And I would encourage all of you to do that with, you know, all of, um, all of us as well. And again, I want to stress that content really matters here. And so it is about just being very, to find your writer's voice. Finding your writer's voice is very important. And so, you know, beyond social media, you can self-publish thought leadership articles on Medium. Uh, you can publish your own newsletter and, you know, send it out to people who are on your email, um, videos or podcasts. You could also reach out to news organizations um, you know, like mine, and uh, become a contributor, right? We're always looking for great technology thought leadership pieces. And so this is how you can find another audience that amplifies your voice and or launch your own website. And really, I kind of think that, you know, you could have a LinkedIn. LinkedIn is essentially the, the resume online. But I think um, your own website also um, allows you to have, I'll just flip through to the, to that part where you could kind of do that. So, um, you know, you could do square, uh, you could build your own website. It's, it's really not that hard. You have a lot of materials already. Um, so that's, I'm sharing my own website with you, but there's just, there's just a lot of stuff, right. That, that you want to flesh out beyond your resume. Um, and so I've, I've just kind of organized those things and it, it allows people to see a richer side of really a 2D story that you see on LinkedIn, which is essentially, you know, your resume. Uh, a website allows you to flesh out your, your story, your professional story that much more. Um, but I'll leave you with this before I take more questions. Just lean into the disruption. It's the only thing we can do really, and launch already. Great. I think we had a question from our, our Facebook um, uh, viewer, their audience um, in Seoul, and I think it had to do with you know operating in an international climate. Um, you know, obviously, when we're putting this out, we're putting out to the world. Are you mindful of your audience around the globe as you're putting this to, or is there kind of a primary audience that you're speaking to? That's a great question. Um, a global audience is who I'm talking to. But at the same time, I'm mindful that not everybody is on the same page. But that's really my job and has always been um, for the past 10 years is as a global anchor to be mindful of that. And so where are the pockets of information that you can share, a perspective that you can share to a global audience that is consistent, but then also very specific to a part of the world that might not necessarily get it, right? So. This is just something that we in Asia are just really familiar with. When we say global audience, we're really talking about the West. 
but you know, there's a lot of education sometimes, the, the idiosyncrasies of Asian culture, the nuances of you know, cities. Um, Tokyo, very different from Seoul, very different from Hong Kong, very different from Singapore. Um, but in the West, it's just all Asia, right? Um, and so it's, you know, so how do you kind of inject a little bit of that perspective? It is, it is, it is, um, it is a little bit of a challenge only if it forces you to be mindful of it. You know, we've also, um, obviously are very aware of, uh, of the trolls out there. And I, I wonder if you've had any problems with, with trolls. How do you, and how generally, how do you protect yourself online? Yeah. Um, I ignore it. Nah, what are you going to do? And, and, and I really don't, but I have had them, but I, I mean, if you engage in a fight, that they'll all come knocking at your door because they found a mark. And so you want to continue that mark or you want to move on? I, you know, I mean, I, I'm reminded of, of, you know, the ch children's, the, the little children's poem, sticks and stones might break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And, and quite frankly, that's true. So. So just ignore it as, as much as you can. It seems to be your philosophy. Well, I mean, I, I mean, and or, you know, um, I see it. It's not like I can ignore it, but I'm not interested enough to engage in it. That's not a conversation I want to have. So, you know, if it's an intellectual debate, and somebody's calling me out on it, and I I have defensible points, then I then I will share that. But you know, um, you can always end a fight by walking away. You don't need to engage. If you want to engage, you can engage. If you don't want to engage, even if they chase you, eventually they'll go away. Um, I think the 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 real the real question that you want to start um, practicing is, you know, this this is really about ego, right? Somebody has attacked you, and do you have ego integrity to continue to be who you are? And that's the real work. Great. Um, we've got a few minutes left. I wonder, you know, for us newbies, like if if you want to start putting yourself out there, what are, you know, what are three, you know, what are, you know, some practical, maybe give us a couple of just really practical tips of how do you go about doing it? What, it, what, are, what, what, what should we be, think, be thinking about if this is a, a new, fairly new journey and you're trying to be purposeful about it? Okay. Um, so like literally if you, if you've just, if you, it's like building a muscle, okay? So start building the muscle. Go out, uh, maybe not right now, maybe when things are, but actually no, practice at home, practice at home, okay? So practice at home um, and just start snapping pictures of, of things that are important to you, you doing things, start creating a visual story. Start, start practicing, okay? Start practicing right? And, and as you practice, you'll start finding your voice, okay? Like um, funny little quips or, or you, you notice something and something it strikes you as funny. Write it down, take a picture of it, write it down, like do something, you know, cute or whatever it is, but just start to build up the muscle if you've never done it before. Um, do this for a day, 72 hours, a week, at the end of the week, you'll have a whole bunch of stuff and you'll start realizing, aha, uh -huh, okay, I think I might have started discovering what my voice is going to be, right? Um, I would say that this is increasingly a very visual social media medium. Um, so so um, get a great couple of biopics, you know, it's... Uh, have your family take shots of you, be creative, set it up, do a self, 
you know, timer. Um, we have time. So, so, and I would say, find the light. Where's the light? Natural light is wonderful. Um, and just ha have it face you. Um, so have some, have pictures, start finding a voice. And again, it's that characterization, like on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, it's just that little bio, that little bio paragraph of who you are. And that's your 30 second pitch. I would say work on those things because once you start seeing it for yourself, you've proven to yourself that you, you have a story and a compelling story to tell. And I think like any good journalist, you'll start to realize, hey, it's a pretty good story and you want to self-publish. Great, fantastic. Jill, did you want to add something? Yes, sure. Uh, well, uh, so not a particular question, but I, I'd like to, to, to thank you, Angie, for, for, for this uh, very insightful presentation. And uh, what I wanted to say is that, uh, unfortunately, with the, uh, the, the economic crisis that goes with the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of newsrooms are unfortunately considering laying off journalists or, or at least they, they are put under a lot of stress. And, and that's, of course, a very negative aspect of, of, this, of, of this crisis uh, because the, the, the news media is already an industry that is uh, under a lot of stress in the, in the, in the, in the past uh, years. Um, but what is nice through your presentation or through the, the conversation we had in the first session is that we, what we are seeing is, is the uh, transformation of the media and, uh, and, and somehow this crisis is accelerating this transformation. And, and, and the negative side is that, is that known voices, media that have been around for many years uh, are uh, shrinking or disappearing. But at the same time, uh, as, as we've seen with Grace, for example, in the first session, we, we are seeing new voices emerging and, and, and journalists and passionate individuals who know about topics and, and, and can share uh, their, their, their knowledge and, and become journalists. And, and that's very exciting. And, and I'm sure that uh, all those who are in this case and listen to, to this uh, session got a, a lot of very insightful information to, to build their, their brand as a, as a journalist. So yeah, thanks a lot. I hope so. I yeah. hope so. Thank you, yeah. everybody. You've given us a lot to, to think about uh, in terms of you know making basically making the best of, of this of this time and really finding opportunity, um, you know, during during these difficult times. So thank you so much for joining us, Angie. Really great stuff. You're welcome. One more thing. Can you show my last slide? Because I hope this conversation and uh, as as a resource for the audience. Um, of course. Please do reach out uh, if you need anything. My um, uh, my handle is at Angie TV Lau, so feel free to you know ping me there, share. I'll ping you back. I'll uh, retweet, reshare, have a conversation with me. Let's have fun together. Um, you can also uh, directly email me at Angie at forecast.news. And then if you want to check out the site, it's www.forecast dot news um, and then also the angielow.com so you can just see how um, how launching your own website might also be a really nice idea uh, I think you're right Gilles it's it's there's it's it's such a it's such an ironic moment for media right now media is experiencing its renaissance moment I know that for us and for all news organizations around the world the spike in readership has been enormous. The, the, the desire and hunger and appetite for quality content is driving people to our site in a way that we haven't seen. Um, however, at the same time, those advertising dollars are drying up, newsrooms are laying off, uh, and media organizations in some cases are closing. The ones that didn't survive 2008 are done now. So this is a very ironic moment for us. And so I think it really behooves all of us as individual journalists to really think about, you know, once upon a time we thought about the platform as a conduit to our to our audience. No more. Social media has completely democratized that. 
what matters now is content, quality content, and, and the trustworthiness of your voice, and the credibility of you, your voice, and really the, the courage that you have in sharing it. You're now the conduit. You're now the best chance for your readers to see your story. You're the brand that matters. That's what I think COVID has really gifted us. And so I hope that you'll see this as a true gift and, and you know, embrace it. That's great last thoughts for us to think about, Angie. Thanks so much. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us uh, for our very first digital N3 salon of 2020. Uh, we've got a lot more coming. Uh, we've got one planned actually for next month. If you found this morning uh, these conversations uh, to be insightful, if you like the conversations and training here, you're going to love N3Con. Uh, That's our annual conference. Uh, it's going to be happening August 28th through 30th. Uh, perhaps here in, here in Hong Kong, if they relax uh, social distancing measures, uh, but certainly we'll be pursuing a hybrid or, or a, a, an all digital version as well. We're also looking for volunteers to help us with programming and marketing, videos and magazine. Uh, so please get in touch with, with Jill's, our director, or me if you'd like to get involved. Um, and but but also know that we here uh, at AJ Asia we're here for you and we really want to um, you know hear your concerns and really try to help you work through this difficult time. So thank you for joining us uh, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.